It's my pleasure to introduce to the community Dr. Robert Christman. And Dr. Robert Christman is going to play an essential part in helping us select a new superintendent. Dr. Christman has extensive experience, 22 years as a superintendent, 46 years in education, has served as the executive director of the Western New York Education Leadership Council at the University of Buffalo, served as president of the New York State Council of School Superintendents, and on the governing board of the American Association of School Administrators has been involved in numerous uh, superintendent searches, Clarkstown, Jamestown, Rochester, Albany, and currently Roundout Valley, among others. So, Dr. Christman, could you please explain the procedure uh, uh, concerning the search for a new I, superintendent? I will try to do that. I'm having a flashback because five minutes ago I felt like I was a superintendent walking in the faculty room. Everybody left. I could, the two north magnets hitting, so it takes me a little second to get used to that. Um, let, me, let me start with this, which is a personal comment. Uh, I, when I retired three years ago, I had, uh, it was noted how many board meetings I had attended uh, as a superintendent over my career. <clears throat> it came close to 800. And I will tell you, uh, that this evening was probably the most memorable board meeting that I had a chance to observe and participate in. Uh, this is a very special school district. It's a very special board of education. And I think that you will be able to uh, see the results of all the work that you've done over the next, in the, in the next few years as you attract candidates to take Dr. Eastwood's um, position. Let me start with my hardest job over the last probably three months was repeatedly uh, trying to get Ken to change his mind. Uh, I worked as hard as I possibly could. I offered my own incentives. Uh, I would gladly uh, give up this uh, chance to serve as your consultant uh, for the opportunity for him to stay, but to no avail and it's getting closer, so I'm down to a few days now. Um, yeah. um, but uh, as was mentioned, I, uh, I did retire as a superintendent 22 years. I'm now affiliated with the, I'm executive director of the New York State Leadership Group, and we are tied in with SUNY Buffalo State. Uh, I was honored by the board to be given the uh, opportunity to uh, do this, uh, uh, assist the board with the search. It certainly, the positive things will come into play. One is you need to know the reputation of the district. Any candidate coming in, the first, one of the first things will, will be to check on what's going on in the district. What's the history been? Uh, how are things going? The other thing they'll do is they'll, they'll look very carefully at the Board of Education. So right off the bat, you start with two real big pluses, which should make the, uh, uh, my work much easier. Um, let me briefly review the process and procedures. The first thing we started with, uh, which was probably the most challenging uh, one of all, is that I laid out for the board uh, the possible uh, different ways, options to to go through the process of, of their selection of a superintendent. And I laid out for them uh, three different options. One was a confidential search process in which the board itself would be involved in the selections, but we would use extensively uh, focus groups uh, reflecting staff and community to provide a great deal of input directly to the board. The second option was to have an open search with one committee to interview, uh, one committee that represented the groups to interview both the uh, semi-finalist and or the, the finalist. 
The second one, or the third one, was to take all of those focus groups and have each one interview the semi-finalist or finalist. And the board really had what I would call a deep discussion about what would be the uh, best uh, way for them to go. And each board makes its own decisions. In the last 10 searches that I've done, eight of them have chosen the confidential search. And I, would, I think it's important to understand why a board would do that. Uh, you should expect to have superintendents applying for this job. I'd be uh, doubtful that any principal would be ready to take on the leadership role in, in Middletown. So if we can assume for a second that the vast majority of the candidates will be superintendents, it makes it very difficult for them to, some of them, to apply for jobs and then have everyone know that they want to leave the district they're in. And on top of that, when some may be dealing with some tough issues, uh, not reflecting anything on their performance, but, you know, on occasion, boards do get out of control. And, and so now you have this in the public, and maybe a superintendent's coming up for a contract. And, and so, well, listen, if you want to leave us, then we're going to, you know, you don't need another contract. So when you have a, an opportunity to have a confidential search, you will definitely, there's no question from, from my point of view and from other consultants I work with, that you will get a, a better quality of candidate and you'll get a better quantity of candidates. You want to have as many people available for you to choose to be your next school leader. And by having the confidential search with, with the guarantee that there's going to be a great deal of input that goes directly to the board, I, I, that was the option that the board chose and, and, uh, and I think it'll work out uh, very well. Uh, the, uh, the board has uh, indicated there are going to be nine groups. Uh, I'm working tomorrow all day with meeting these people. And if I could just mention very briefly, administrators, directors and supervisors, high school students, nurses, teaching assistants, clerical food service, aides and monitors, CSEA, teachers, former board presidents, PTO presidents, community members. I'm going to meet with all of those groups tomorrow, starting in the morning and going till probably 9 tomorrow night. They will be uh, indicating on a, a survey what their priorities would be for the next superintendent. And then there are some key questions I would like them to answer so they're going to end up with a homework assignment. If anyone is going and you know it's a homework assignment, you may or may not want to come, but we, we have to do some writing. Uh, and then we open it up for anything that anyone would want to say about the school district, about the search, about anything dealing with uh, the next superintendent. Every single one of those comments that I will hear tomorrow in those nine groups will be shared directly with the Board of Education. They will know what is on everyone's mind in addition to taking a look at the rating of uh, qualifications by group. So there will be nine different groups that, are, that will, you'll see what the first priority of each of those nine groups, the second priority, and then they'll balance that against the survey that they did to see how uh, it all compares. So there'll be 10 different sets of data for that. And I think that that's uh, something that they'll, they'll find to be uh, pretty valuable. Um, Tomorrow, we, in those focus groups, we'll review the process. Again, we'll, we'll choose the qualities, we'll answer the key questions, and have the open discussion. Uh, we will be doing an online survey. And uh, we would encourage, uh, through, the, through the board and through the school district, that as many people complete that online survey as possible. That information will also be shared directly with the board. There'll be an opportunity to put comments on that online survey. All of the comments from that will also be shared with the board. There will be no information that I receive that will be restricted from the board purview. Uh, we'll also have hand copies available in the school, so if anyone uh, perhaps did not have access to a computer at home or access to a computer in another fashion, they'll be able to pick one up and we'll accept that as well. Uh, after all of that data is put together, then I will be meeting with the board 
and they will make a decision about what qualities they seek. What I do that's, that's kind of unique, I think, from other uh, consultants is that I will ask the board to take all of that information and then prioritize what they think is the most important quality for them. What's the second most important quality? Because when I see on a, on a, a priority basis, it makes it a lot uh, easier for me to go out and seek people who fit the criteria that they are seeking. So if, for example, and I'm making this up, number one was they have to have, uh, we're looking for someone with a very strong business background. That's number one. Well, if you don't have a strong business background, then the chances are either from my point of view as a consultant or from your point of view as a candidate, you really need to look at that. Is this the place for me? Because this is not what the board is looking for. So it tends to screen out when they know exactly what the board is looking for. And again, the, the board will make that decision probably in the next uh, 10 days or so. Uh, we will be putting together a brochure. Uh, usually I do the brochure myself uh, with input from the board. Uh, in Middletown, the brochure was put together by the district. And I'm almost embarrassed to say that the brochure they did was better than the ones I do. So what I'm going to do is provide revenue for the school district in the future and ask them to do the brochures for the other districts they may have after I leave. So I, I know your name and phone number, so you're, we're coming. Um, and uh, uh, the um, board has put in uh, its preferences for experience. Uh, they would prefer to have someone who has superintendent experience district office experience, principal experience, and teacher experience. Not requirements, but they prefer to have that. So they'll be looking at candidates that maybe match that profile. Uh, they are also, uh, one of the other big decisions a board has to make is whether residency is required or not. Many boards do, many boards don't. It's probably 50-50. But this board has decided that within one year, residency will be required. And, uh, and so every candidate will know that that is an expectation should they be selected for the position. Uh, the, uh, uh, we're going to put ads in uh, to announce the uh, vacancy. They will be put in the uh, National Superintendents uh, publication, New York State School Boards, New York State Superintendents, a national publication called Education Week. And I believe in the Middletown, is it town record? Some Time Herald's record, okay. And, and the last piece of information that I would bring is that uh, the, there are two key dates. Uh, one is the deadline for applications, which is March 1st. And the second one, which is uh, the interviews that the board will conduct uh, uh, between April 1st and April 15th, they will be selecting a preliminary group of semi-finalists. They will interview those semi-finalists, decide who they would consider to be finalists, and then have uh, individual uh, uh, evenings to meet with them uh, to uh, further explore the candidacy. They will receive an extensive amount of information from me on a reference check. It's something that we take very seriously. And I think something we do very well. And the, the board will see that they will know a considerable amount of information about a, a good number of candidates who have applied for the position. Uh, uh, and, and so they'll use that information to hopefully help them make the decision as to who to select for the initial interview. With that, uh, I am finished. I'll answer any questions the board may have uh, or however you might want to handle it. We met with you before. That, yes. that should be noted. Uh, and uh, we also interviewed other groups before New York State, New York leadership, state leadership was uh, selected. So uh, we, we hopefully, and I know we did our homework on, on this. Yeah. And uh, as uh, Dr. Eastwood mentioned, uh, none of us want to see this district go backwards. When we look back after a few years when we're no longer on the board, we want this district to 
not only remain the same, but to move forward. We want to see this happening, and this is one of the reasons why you were selected. So, And what you've created here is very special, and I think you'll find people who will be able to succeed, Ken, uh, who will continue to make it successful, and I appreciate the comment. I think you'll see everything that you built stay. Because you've built so many things that nobody else would be able to do.